Good morning and welcome to today's verse. To God be the glory. What a great day it is today. Today's verse, it comes to us from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 24, verse 24 and 25. And it says this. And after some days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he went, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, go away from now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. The text before us today, in my Bible at least, it is subtitled Paul before Felix. But when you get down to verse 25, it really should be subtitled uh, Felix before Paul or Felix before Christ. Felix, you see, he's actually the one that is on trial here. And so it's everyone that hears the good news and then rejects it. For it's not a matter of what a person knows about Jesus that he'd be judged on, but what he does with that knowledge. It's just like when Pilate said, what then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? This represents life's greatest question. And the answer to that question can determine a person's eternal destiny. Whenever and wherever the gospel is preached, it's always going to cause some type of reaction. I mean, either people are going to believe it, receive it, they're going to uh, reject it, oppose it, or maybe they're going to be like Felix and just put everything off. Again, in verse 25, when Paul begins to reason about righteousness, uh, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix is afraid. He's fearful, and he answers, go away from now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. And for us, we know that was never a convenient time. And so it is with those that have hardened their heart against the gospel and the things of Christ. They never seem to have a convenient, never the right time. They just keep putting everything off. Take, for example, uh, the Lord's comments on discipleship that we find in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 9, where these three would-be disciples, and I call them would-be disciples because it's for us. We know they never really followed the Lord. In verse 57 of that chapter, we read where it says, it came to pass as they went on the way that a certain man came to the Lord and said, I will follow you. Sounds good, right? I mean, there's no condition on his followership, but the Lord discerned something wasn't quite right about this fellow. And so the Lord answers him and says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to, to lay his head. And so maybe this man just wanted to tag along, get along to get to the top, associate with the Messiah, and then he then he would be connected with the Messiah when he's revealed to everyone. Maybe he had a, a Judas uh, problem, that is misguided ambition, whatever it was, the Lord let him know is is not going to be, you know, silver and gold for you at the end by just following me. Count the cost, in other words. And then that's another fellow that the Lord uh, he doesn't volunteer, but the Lord just calls him and gives him an invitation such as he did to the disciples saying, follow me. It's kind of like that. But he said to the Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. Now, that, that, I mean, that doesn't sound bad. You don't want a dead body lying, in bank, but, lying around. But the problem is this, is that his father was not dead. What he was saying to the Lord in essence was, wait till I get my inheritance. Wait till I'm secure. And then I will follow you just in case this Jesus movement, this Jesus thing don't work out. What he did not realize is that those that the Lord calls, he will equip. He could not put his trust and confidence in the Lord to supply his every need. And so Jesus says to him, let the dead bury the dead. In other words, let the spiritually dead take, take care of burying the physically dead. You go and preach the kingdom of God. And the last man that he approaches, he says to him, he says, Lord, I will follow you. And that sounds good. But then there's this condition again. He says, but let me first go and be at those at home, bid farewell to those who are in my house. He wanted to go home and make sure he had everything in order before he followed the Lord. And Jesus replied to this man saying, no man having put his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Procrastination, 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 putting it off until tomorrow, what you ought to do today. How many missed opportunities have we had out there? Some people could have had a career changing opportunity, but yet they missed it. Someone could have had the relationship of the life, but yet you missed it. Thank God that his invitation 
uh, to come to know him through the gospel, the preaching and teaching of the gospel is not that way. But the Bible says, nevertheless, ne today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in the provocation. And we find that in, um, uh, in uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 15. And again, the Bible tells us, now is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, uh, verse 2. I mean, when it comes to the matter of your eternal soul and you have an opportunity to be secure in Christ, don't put it off. It's not the convenient time is now. Now is the day of salvation. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. I pray that you would meditate upon this verse. It would be uh, this, this text. It would be a word of encouragement to you as you go throughout your day. I pray that you would have a great day. It is the weekend. Get out and do something special for yourself and with your family. Today is my birthday. I'm dressed to go out for a run. I'm going to go out for a four-mile run, uh, work up an appetite, get together with my grandchildren. A little bit later on, we're going to have a pizza party. Then I'm going to watch the MMA uh, fights in Abu Dhabi this weekend. Sunday is coming. Make sure you enter into a place of worship, depart to serve Monday morning, God's willing, We'll see you right back here. Yeah, on today's verse. Amen.